was a time of turmoil in the ancient Near East, a time when kingdoms rose and fell under the weight of relentless conquest. Among these, the kingdom of Judah faced a threat that seemed insurmountable. The Assyrian Empire, known for its might and ruthlessness, had set its sights on Jerusalem. Uh, their army, vast and formidable, marched with confidence, leaving a trail of devastation in its wake. <laughs> The people of Judah, outnumbered and outmatched, looked to their king Hezekiah for hope. Hezekiah, a man of deep faith and unwavering commitment to the God of Israel, had ascended the throne of Judah at just 25 years of age following the death of his father, King Ahaz. Unlike his father who had strayed into idolatry, Hezekiah sought to restore the spiritual foundation of his kingdom. His reforms brought the people back to the worship of the true God. But his faith would soon face its greatest test. The Assyrians encamped outside Jerusalem, their numbers a terrifying sight to the defenders on the city walls. Their Jenna Rabsheke taunted the people, mocking their faith in God and declaring their futility of resistance. Fear gripped the city, and despair crept into the hearts of many. In this moment of crisis, Hezekiah turned not to his armies, but to his God. He entered the temple and laid the Assyrian threat before the Lord in prayer. The plea was simple, yet profound, that God would deliver his people, not for their sake alone, but so that all the kingdoms of the earth would know his power. What happened next would become one of the most extraordinary events in history. In the dead of night, a single angel sent by God descended upon the Assyrian camp. With divine precision and unmatched power, the angel struck down 108 five soldiers. By morning, the once mighty Assyrian army lay in ruins and the survivors fled in terror. The deliverance of Jerusalem was complete, not by human strength or strategy, but through the direct intervention of the divine. The Assyrian king, Sennacherib, humiliated and defeated, retreated to his capital, Nineveh, his ambitions of conquest shattered. In today's video, we'll delve into the fascinating details of this historic event. So buckle up, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let's dive into this incredible story from the past. In the turbulent era of ancient kingdoms, a remarkable figure emerged during the reign of Judah, King Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz. He had ascended the throne at the tender age of 25, around 715 years before Christ, following the death of his father. However, Hezekiah's reign was marked by more than just a dynastic succession. He distinguished himself through his deep and unwavering commitment to the God of Israel. From the early days of his reign, Hezekiah revealed unwavering devotion to the Lord. His first major undertaking was an energetic campaign to purify the temple in Jerusalem. <laughs> Aware of the importance of this sacred place, Hezekiah undertook a mission to remove any trace of idolatry that had infiltrated the temple precincts. Altars dedicated to pagan gods were demolished, and idols that had turned the hearts of the people away were removed. Hezekiah did not stop at merely destroying idolatrous elements, but also established true worship of the Lord. He instituted practices and rituals that reaffirmed faith in the God of Israel, restoring the spiritual purity of the temple. This campaign against idolatry was not a mere formality, but a reflection of Hezekiah Gaia's sincere heart. His zeal for the Lord was evident, as he did not hesitate to confront entrenched practices that had diverted the nation from its divine purpose. His leadership not only shaped worship in the temple, but also inspired a spiritual renewal among the people of Judah. A curious story concerns a bronze serpent that was erected by Moses during the Exodus, as recorded in the Book of Numbers. Each creation was linked to divine healing, where those bitten by venomous serpents could look upon the bronze serpent and be healed. However, over time this serpent became an object of worship, known as Nehushtan. Instead of being a symbol of trust in God's power to heal, the serpent became an idol, violating the fundamental principles of worshipping a single God. When Hezekiah undertook his religious reforms in Judah, he made the courageous decision to destroy the bronze serpent. His action not only severed ties with idolatrous practices, but also symbolized Hezekiah's commitment to restoring pure and exclusive worship to the God of Israel. Hezekiah's decision to eliminate idolatry was not without challenges. 
He faced resistance and criticism, but his confidence in the God of Israel remained unshaken. His commitment was more than an expression of religious zeal. It was a demonstration of unwavering trust in divine providence. By purifying the temple and abolishing idolatry, Hezekiah not only restored true worship, but also paved the way for divine intervention in his life. The Lord responded to this act of faith with blessings, revealing himself as a God who honors those who seek him with all their heart. Thus, the story of King Hezekiah is not just a chapter in Judah's narrative, but a lasting testimony of how sincere commitment to God can transform not only a king's life, but an entire nation. Hezekiah left behind a legacy of faithfulness, reminding us of the importance of placing God at the center of our lives and societies. However, the worst scenario was yet to come. In a period of political turbulence and constant threats, the imposing shadow of Sennacherib, the Assyrian king, loomed over the borders of Judah. It was a time when nations were defined by military strength, and Sennacherib led Assyria, considered one of the most powerful nations in the world at that time. The Assyrian army, known for its cruelty and military effectiveness, posed an imminent threat to the surrounding kingdoms. Sennacherib, in his quest for expansion, ruthlessly advanced through the cities of Judah, leaving a trail of destruction wherever he went. Yet his covetous gaze was fixed on the pearl of the region, Jerusalem. Hezekiah, the God-fearing king, found himself cornered in the face of the Assyrian threat. Seeking a peaceful solution, he attempted to persuade Sennacherib to refrain from invading Jerusalem. In a desperate gesture, he offered a significant tribute, mobilizing treasures from the temple and palace in Jerusalem. The tribute was monumental, ten and a half tons of silver and one ton and fifty kilograms of gold, an offering that reflected not only material wealth, but also the depth of the desire to preserve the sacred city. Hezekiah, uh, in his pursuit of peace, was willing to sacrifice invaluable treasures to protect his people and his capital. However, Sennacherib's response revealed the typical arrogance of conquerors of that time. Disregarding the offering, the Assyrian king openly challenged both Hezekiah and the God of Israel. His defiant words echoed, claiming that just as the gods of conquered nations could not stop him, the God of Israel would also be powerless against his onslaught. This affront not only exacerbated tensions, but solidified the need for divine intervention. Faced with the rejection of his peace attempts, Hezekiah turned to the only source that could ensure deliverance. Confronted with the imminent threat of Assyria, Hezekiah faced a period of intense uncertainty and doubt. The biblical account highlights his initial reaction of distress at Sennacherib's ultimatum. He tore his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth, traditional symbols of mourning and despair in the Jewish culture of that time. King Hezekiah's heart pounded in despair, but his faith remained unwavering. As the shadows of invasion loomed over Jerusalem, Hezekiah chose not to succumb to despair, but to lift his cry to the God of Israel. Instead of yielding completely to fear and uncertainty, Hezekiah took concrete steps. He went to the temple of the Lord to worship, seeking God's presence amid adversity. This attitude reflects Hezekiah's understanding that even in the face of a formidable threat, his primary confidence and refuge should be found in the Lord. Moreover, Hezekiah did not hesitate to seek divine guidance through the prophet Isaiah. He sent a delegation to the prophet dressed in sackcloth as a sign of humility and supplication. In this scene of distress, the prophet Isaiah, a chosen spokesperson of the Most High, brings a divine message to the king Isaiah instructed by the Lord, announces words of comfort and promise of deliverance. The prophet's message was like a bomb to Hezekiah's uh, troubled heart. <laughs> Do not be afraid of the words that you have heard, with which the servants of the king of Assyria have reviled me. Behold, I will put a spirit in him, so that he shall hear a rumor and return to his own land. Isaiah conveyed the words of the Lord, offering divine assurances of protection and supernatural intervention. The God of Israel would not remain indifferent to the pleas of his faithful servant. There were, the promise was clear, the city would not be delivered into the hands of the king of Assyria. God whom Hezekiah sought in prayer was about to manifest his power in response to the trust placed in him. 
Furthermore, Isaiah prophesied that Sennacherib would return to his own land and be defeated by the sword in his homeland. The prophetic message not only calmed the king's heart, but also strengthened his faith. Hezekiah, even in the face of overwhelming threat, chose to trust in the word of the Lord spoken through Isaiah. This trust was not merely a matter of military strategy, but a total surrender to the God who controls destinies. However, as the city was about to face its most terrible trial, a celestial chapter was about to unfold in the darkness of the night, when silence was only interrupted by the distant murmur of the Assyrian camp. Divine intervention was underway. The Lord sent his angel, a celestial figure, enveloped in light and power, to confront the army threatening his chosen people. The angel, emissary of the Almighty, hovered over the Assyrian camp like a divine sentinel. In a single night, a celestial being defeated 185-0 Assyrian soldiers. The celestial battlefield was beyond human comprehension, and victory did not come through human military strategies, but through the supernatural power of the angel sent by the God of Israel. The miracle went beyond military defeat. It was a tangible manifestation of divine care and protection. The promise made through the prophet Isaiah was being fulfilled. The God of Israel not only heard Hezekiah's anguished prayers, but acted with unparalleled power to deliver his people from the Assyrian threat. As they walked through the fields that were once the Assyrian camp, the inhabitants of Jerusalem encountered a haunting sight. Where the tents of the enemy army once stood, now lay 185,000 lifeless bodies, a graphic demonstration of the divine power that had operated overnight. The silence that enveloped the defeated camp was interrupted by murmurs of awe and gratitude. Each corpse bore witness to the supernatural intervention that turned the looming nightmare into an undeniable miracle. The faith of the people who had faced a night of apprehension, flourished in the morning light, now illuminated by divine victory. The citizens of Judah not only contemplated the remnants of the miracle, but felt it deeply in their hearts. Victory over the Assyrians was not achieved through military strategies or human strength. It was the visible manifestation of divine favor. That morning became a living testimony to the faithfulness of the God of Israel. Sennacherib's fate was marked by a surprising turn. The leader of the Assyrian army managed to escape despite the magnitude of the miracle. After his failed attempts to conquer Jerusalem and his mockery against the God of Israel, he returned to Nineveh. However, his end was not as grand as he might have imagined. And, while worshipping in his own temple, Sennacherib was assassinated by his own sons, Hadrambalek and Sharzah. The precise details of this event are not entirely clear in historical narrative. However, the Bible records that during this act of worship, Adramalek and Shariza attacked Sennacherib with a sword. Taking his life, this shocking event demonstrates that arrogance and disbelief in God do not go unpunished. Divine justice unexpectedly reached the Sennacherib, highlighting that no king, no matter how powerful, can escape God's sovereign control over life and death. This tragic outcome reveals that mocking the Lord has serious consequences and that divine sovereignty cannot be challenged without facing repercussions. As for King Hezekiah, after the impressive victory over Sennacherib and the retreat of the Assyrian forces, he faced a severe illness. The Bible describes this situation in the second book of Kings, chapter 20. Hezekiah became so ill that the prophet Isaiah, son of Amoz, came to him and announced that he would not recover and should prepare for death. Facing this news, Hezekiah once again turned to the Lord in prayer. He reminded God of his devotion, integrity, and service to the Lord. In tears, he pleaded with God to remember him and reconsider his situation. In response to Hezekiah's sincere prayer, God sent Isaiah back to tell him that he had heard his plea. God decided to heal Hezekiah and added a sign as assurance. Isaiah instructed that a lump of figs be applied to Hezekiah's boil. As a miraculous sign, Hezekiah's illness was cured and he regained his health. Furthermore, as a manifestation of his mercy, God promised Hezekiah fifteen more years of life. 
This extension of time was a direct answer to Hezekiah's fervent prayer and devotion to the Lord. This story showcases God's incredible healing power and His readiness to listen to and answer the prayers of His faithful servants. If you found this video inspiring, don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel, and share your experience in the comments. Has God ever revealed Himself in your life after you prayed? Stay blessed and take care.